Hello my beautiful people, it's your girl Janet Davies, your hair growth guide. On this channel we do all things hair growth, decoding hair loss and all that good stuff. So in this video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different where I'm going to be reacting to some natural hair videos and just to kind of get into the science, the nitty gritty, but in a light-hearted way. So let's get right into the video. So in this video, I believe it's a stylist and she's showing, I think it's one of her clients who has very thin hair, saying shout out to all these people with fine thin hair or see through thin hair, um, the struggle is real. And I just want to go and touch on a few comments that really stood out to me. This person says, I have the same issue, fine hair and low density. I always thought it was genetic, but years later I had a blood test and it turned out I was deficient in iron and vitamin D. I started taking supplements and it made a huge difference. My hair is still fine and I would say I have an average density now. It's not perfect, but when I look back, it's definitely an improvement. And this is the original creator. She said, I'm happy you figured out what your body needs. Just remember healthy hair is perfect hair. Hashtag to fine crew another art lady asked how long did it take to see improvements and someone else i believe responded saying if you are consistent six months to a year don't be like me i fell into bad habits and my hair started shedding again like crazy make sure you are eating enough and this lady asked again what were those bad habits and she responds i wasn't drinking enough water my supplementation wasn't consistent and i wasn't eating enough most people don't have these problems someone says good for you some women are actually like that and no amount of vitamins will fix it i'll kind of touch on that a little bit later another lady says same and another lady also says those two vitamin de deficiencies are due to being gluten intolerant just found that out <laughs> interesting and she also responds saying thanks for this and then someone else goes on to say, I take monthly iron infusions because I'm severely and chronically low. One year later, my hair was back to looking and feeling better. I still have fine hair, but it looks healthier. Another lady says, yes, I was recently diagnosed with severe anemia due to iron deficiency. My hair has definitely thinned out, shake my head. And then it kind of goes on and on and on. So here are my thoughts. I'm really excited because on July 12th, I'm going to be in NYC at the Hair Growth Lab where we're going to be celebrating five years of Amino Naturals and we're going to be decoding all causes of hair loss. Guys, if you're someone who has been struggling with hair loss, you've someone who literally has got to the point of, you know, tried doctors, I've tried pills, I've tried everything and I still can't get to the root cause of my hair issues, please come. You are not gonna leave disappointed. July 12th, sign up to the wait list. I'm gonna put it in the description but and make sure you sign up because I'm gonna be with you guys in real life. I'm gonna be hugging you, squeezing you and just giving you all the advice and tips that you need. So if you're in NYC or even if you're not, fly to us, okay? Send your brother, your sister, your aunties, your uncles, anyone who's dealing with hair loss and tell them to come to NYC to the hair growth lab on July 12th. I cannot wait to meet you guys. Well, I don't think this hairstylist meant anything wrong. And I do want to put a disclaimer out that this is not a drama video. I am way too busy to be doing any of that kind of stuff. Um, this is just lighthearted commentary to give my opinions and thoughts on what's going on in the natural hair space and just to offer advice. So whilst I don't think this stylist meant any ill harm, I don't think she was dragging people. I don't know if this is her hair personally, but I do think we need to do better in our community when it comes to understanding black hair. Just because black hair, I think, is one of the m misunderstood hair types. And without the proper understanding, it can cause people to just assume that if they have thin hair, it's just something Something that they're born with but thin hair about 90% of the time is your body's way of screaming at you that there is something wrong and I need you to pay attention so here's the hard truth our bodies do not prioritize hair growth it is a non-essential thing for survival so when you're deficient in extremely key nutrients like vitamin d iron etc your body reroutes those nutrients to to your vital organs like your heart your brain your liver your kidneys as it rightly should do so that just means whenever you're deficient in key nutrients your hair is the first place to feel all of the effects and that means thinning slowed growth and just breakage and here's a fun fact by the time you actually see hair loss from a deficiency it may have been developing for about six to 12 months behind the scenes and if that doesn't speak volumes i don't know what will so so the lady that said it took about six months for her to really see results, I definitely agree with that because it can take about six months to 
a year for your hair to actually react from a deficiency. So it's gonna take at least a, a similar amount of time to regain strength. So let's talk about the main and key nutrients that starve your hair strands. And the first one is iron, because iron actually carries oxygen to the hair follicle. If you don't know already, your hair follicle is not just this stationary thing that doesn't do much. It's ultimately a, like a mini organ and it requires oxygen to grow. And if you're deficient in this vehicle iron that carries oxygen to the hair follicle, guess what? You're gonna have slow growth, you're gonna have shedding, you're gonna have poor strand quality. And this is very common in women, obviously, because we have periods, we have pregnancy and all that kind of stuff. And people with, and fun fact, people who have iron deficiency without anemia, it can still cause hair loss, even if your hemoglobin is normal. So it's something that it's worth really looking into if you're concerned about iron. The next vitamin I want to talk about is vitamin B12 and this is often very overlooked because vitamin B12 is actually essential for red blood cell production and DNA synthesis. Also very crucial for hair growth because if you don't have enough vitamin B12 and you're not making enough red blood cells, those red blood cells, you can't transplant the nutrients that your hair needs to the follicle. And vitamin B12 deficiency is very common in people who operate a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle because you'll find majority of vitamin B12 in animal based products. Another very key nutrient for hair growth is zinc because zinc is incredibly crucial for tissue growth and repair. And when people have zinc deficiency, you're going to notice a lot of hair shedding. You're going to see a lot of scalp irritation because zinc helps to actually regulate the oil glands in the scalp. So if it's not doing this properly, your scalp is more likely to be inflamed. So zinc is also a key nutrient. Another nutrient is biotin, which is also known as vitamin B7. And this is a very viral popular nutrient or vitamin that everyone raves over. You know, supplementation with this because it's so heavily linked to hair growth because biotin, vitamin B7 actually helps form keratin, which is the hair's main protein. And of course, if you're deficient in this, it can cause the hair to be much more brittle and prone to breakage. So this is one you don't want to play with. And although biotin is often marketed in supplements, it's actually quite rare to have a true deficiency. But again, this is something that you need to test with your doctor. Another nutrient is collagen and amino acids because hair, again, is made of protein. And if you're low in amino acids, therefore growth slows down. And collagen also provides some of the raw materials for hair. So if you're deficient in the building blocks for hair, your body is just not going to prioritize it at all. It's going to prioritize other things that it needs for survival. Another nutrient is actually protein. And this is something that a lot of people overlook because they're just assuming that your key micronutrients or micro key micronutrients are more important. But did you know that women eating under 50 grams of protein per day may experience up to 50% slower hair growth over time? Because if you have insufficient protein, which your hair is basically made from, you're going to have slowed hair broke it, slowed hair production, breakage and just stunted growth. So we need to be upping our protein. The last nutrient, which I think is so important when it comes to us black, melanated, brown, dark skinned women is vitamin D. Because if the chances are, if you're watching this and you're black, your 90% chance is you are deficient in vitamin D. And that is a real shame because vitamin D is so crucial for hair growth. Vitamin D actually directly interacts with hair follicles and influences the hair growth cycle. So if you're deficient in this, it's gonna cause the hair growth cycle to slow down because vitamin D actually signals the anagen phase, which is the growth phase. And without enough vitamin D, that anagen phase, that growth phase is not gonna be signaled as much. But the crazy thing is you could be literally eating everything right, but you could be sabotaging your hair growth in other ways like medications. This is also a key thing when it comes to healthy hair growth, because a lot of the times medications may actually be part of the problem. They can be depleting you of these nutrients without you even knowing. So things like birth control pills that literally depletes and strips you of things like vitamin B, your B vitamins, your zinc, your magnesium, things like antiacids. They reduce vitamin B12, magnesium and calcium, things like metformin, which is used for like PCOS or diabetics. That also depletes vitamin B12 and folate. So you're going to really want to look into the medications that you're taking if there are alternatives or find ways with your doctor that you can slowly wean yourself off these long term medications through your diet, life and exercise. Because at the end of the day, I think medic medications are great. 
they help to relieve symptoms but we need to do a better job especially within our black community to not just rely on medications but look at ways where we can live a life where we're not basing ourselves on that in a sense where we're actually getting to the root cause of our issues for example someone who is diabetic actually instead of just taking medications year in and year out and having those side effects through taking it for for years and years actually look for ways to lower your blood sugar naturally through eating healthy fats through regular exercising it doesn't even have to be crazy but even just increasing your muscle mass can massively decrease your blood sugar levels and help with diabetes this is something that is so underlooked like a lot of people who are incredibly thin and have no muscle mass actually have a high chance of getting diabetes this is not a flex i'm pretty thin see this i'm pre-diabetic if you are over the age of 30 i need you to listen to me it doesn't matter what your body shape looks like because clearly I'm probably the ideal body shape for most Americans, right? Whatever that means. When you're 30 plus, if you do not have muscle mass, your body is going to have a hard time processing sugar. I will have a banana and it will send me way over. When you're over 30, your muscles literally shrivel like it's the saddest thing I've ever seen. It's so bad. When I was pregnant, I had gestational diabetes and it was the worst. I would not wish diabetes on literally anybody. Anybody. It's the worst. So listen to me when I tell you that if you could prioritize anything, prioritize muscle mass. Muscle mass. So help your future self out. Go weight train. It's worth it. It's going to help your bones, your muscles, your body, your overall health, everything. Everything and someone who is a bit bigger they have a muscular build but they're also a little bit chubby and they're also eating sugar a lot of the time it's not even about what we're eating it's about how our body processes it and if you have more muscle mass the chances are your body's going to process sugar a lot better so don't be afraid of the weight room there are also some non-nutrient causes of hair loss things like your thyroid and i think this is also something that is very overlooked because a lot of women have an undiagnosed thyroid issue and thyroid is so crucial when it comes to hair growth because your thyroid is almost like a metabolic switch it determines how fast or how slow your metabolism is and it also controls hair growth so if you have a very underactive thyroid your hair growth is also going to be slowed down so if you're someone who's not sure you're constantly being fatigued just go and get your annual thyroid check just to make sure and you can rule out that there is no issues there but don't just look for the tsh which is the thyroid stimulating hormone look ask your doctor for a full thyroid panel looking at t4 t3 and all that good stuff to make sure that every single part of your thyroid is healthy and my last point is actually stress because a lot of people don't realize that no matter how much weight lifting no matter how many green vegetables you're eating all that good stuff if you're doing every single thing right and you're still chronically stressed baby your hair is just never going to grow because when your body is in that stress that high cortisol state very stress fight or flight mode it's not going to ever prioritize hair growth and that's why black women's health and especially mental health is very important to me it's very important to me because stress is one of the most it's the biggest contributor for so many health issues beyond just lack of hair growth you know what i'm talking more long-term chronic diseases so please my ladies choose jesus jesus is my savior and at the end of the day i know i say this all the time but if i ever have an issue with my iphone where am i going to go i'm going to go to apple why because apple created the iphone and i already know that if i go to the original manufacturer i'm going to get the best service it's going to know exactly what to do basically and that's in that same steed that's how i look at jesus i truly believe that god created us and jesus is our savior so if i have issues i'm going to go to the original manufacturer of human beings which is god the creator jesus his son and our savior so choose jesus this is your sign to go into your quiet time and just say god please help me with my stress god has not called you to have a life of stress he's called you to have a life of abundance and peace and that occurs when you walk with him so please this is not a preaching video i'm just showing you my honest thoughts and opinions on how to deal with stress because i think there's a lot out there in the mental health space which is to help you with mental health but i truly believe that a lot of that is just faff and the true way to live a life that is has minimal stress is to go back to our creator and lean on him because a lot of the times we're dealing with stuff that we just shouldn't be dealing with we should be laying it at the feet of jesus but yes so what nutrient actually surprised you the most if you haven't already make sure you join the inner circle where we go deeper we go deep beyond the surface of your hair to understand how 
to grow healthier, thicker, more luscious hair than actual weight. This goes beyond products. This goes beyond what you put on your scalp topically. It's all about what's going on the inside. So if you have PCOS, menopause, any kind of autoimmune condition, come, you're gonna learn so much. So in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about 40 hair, whether it's truly unruly, or do we just have an issue with ourselves being black?